Welcome to Recovery Unplugged. My name is Paul Stiotta and I'm a chaplain at the Colony of Mercy at America's Keswick. And the reason we call this Recovery Unplugged is very simple. There were a lot of secular recovery groups, programs, and, and formulas. And frankly, there's this tension between philosophies and teachings between these programs and biblical truths. The truth of the matter is of that is that we want to take these topics and explore them but looking at them only through the prism of God's Word. This week we're going to tackle a subject that you might find very difficult, something you may be working through right now. It's called grief. Maybe you lost a spouse or a friend, a child or a, or a parent, maybe a coworker. You may have even lost someone who you used to run with when you were in addiction. Maybe someone who lost their battle with addiction that you knew. Maybe you're asking yourself some very tough questions. Like, why did she have to die? She was just so young. It wasn't her fault. It's not fair. I wasn't ready for this. You might even be asking the question, does God really care? I get it. It just doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't. The pain and the hurt from a loss is, is just so overwhelming. It's like this, this tsunami of emotion that rolls over you. You can't eat, or, or maybe you eat too much. You can't sleep, or Maybe all you want to do is lay in bed. You take risks, or you hide from others. There's just no explanation for it. There's just no answer. It's painful. It, it's very painful. In the last several weeks, the Keswick family has experienced the pain of losing two very special people. Bill Bibbick, who had been here at Keswick for 37 years, and Robert Hayes, who is our program director and one of our artists in residence. Both men impacted husband, hundreds, maybe, maybe even thousands of lives, and those lives included mine, all for the cause of Christ. Both of them loved their spouses and their families dearly, and they loved the men of the colony and the women of Barbara's place. We're all feeling this tremendous loss, and we're experiencing grief, real grief. But we also know that these two very special men are now in the presence of Jesus. And they're enjoying their eternal reward. Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 and 14, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so... God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. You might say to yourself, well, that's great relief, chap. Thanks for that. But you just don't understand. I mean, I'm hurting right now. My drunk driver, he, he killed my sister, and she didn't deserve to die. She had no idea it was coming. Or, or my mother was in the hospital with COVID, and we didn't get a chance to say goodbye. Maybe one of the guys I was going to the colony with, he OD'd. And it happened just days after he called me and said he was doing really good. Hey, listen, I do understand. I really do. Several years ago, my wife lost her battle with stage four pancreatic and liver cancer. And eight months later, my father died after 10 years with cancer but it was a silent battle. He never told anybody until the very end. I gotta tell you, it was a double whammy. Dealing with the loss of each of them, though, was different. I mean, the life experiences that I had with each one, needless to say, were, were unique. Both the good and the not so good. Here's the truth. We grieve because we loved. The more you love that person, the more you'll grieve that person. 
You grieve because you love. Let's face it, we all hear stories every single day of people who die in accidents or of illness. We might feel sorry for their passing, but we didn't know them. If one of those people just happened to be close to us, that changes everything. So, if we grieve because we love, it becomes a barometer of how much we love. And because of that, it's important that you recognize that grieving is a deeply personal experience. Nobody knows how much you love that person. They don't have any idea of the depth of that love. They have no understanding of what that person meant to you. They didn't see the good, they didn't see the bad, and they certainly didn't see the ugly. They didn't, and they don't, walk in your shoes. And nobody can tell you how to grieve, or how long to grieve, or the right way to grieve, or what to expect as you grieve. There are a lot of well-meaning people, family, friends, church folk, neighbors, even pastors and counselors, that will give you their perspectives of what you're feeling of, and, and how you're going through it. Maybe they're basing it on their own loss, or, or, or might be a book that they've read, or a class that they took, or a blog that they were clued into. Or maybe it's just out of plain old concern for you. They don't want to see you in pain. They don't want to see you hurting. They mean well, but they haven't had that relationship with the loved one that you lost. Again, it's a deeply personal experience that only you can walk through. You might have heard from various different places about the grief cycle or, or the grieving process or the stages of grief. That's an identified pattern of, of, that some counselors actually use to, to track a person's emotions during the grief. Some say that there are five stages, others say seven, but the most mentioned are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and finally, acceptance. In no set order, these don't exist. These emotions and a bunch of others just, just kind of come and go. The thinking that there's a stage of grief is really not fair to you. They just roll in and roll out, kind of like waves at the shore. You might not ever deny that your loved one is gone, but you may be angry that they are. You might be depressed at the same time as you're accepting the loss. So just know it's okay to experience all of these or a few of these. There's a whole bunch of other emotions too you might be going through that aren't listed on some sheet. It's a journey. It's a grief journey, and it's your journey. You have to travel it alone. Sure, you'll have other people in your life that, that are affected by your loss, children, parents, friends, siblings, but they had their own journeys to navigate. Your concern for their well-being should not affect your grief journey. In fact, I gotta tell you, it's okay not to be okay. It's okay, cry, laugh, Get silly, get serious, get quiet, get, get noisy. But one thing you should do is don't try to be brave. Don't put on airs. Don't fake it till you make it. You may be putting on an act for others, but it's not helping you. The one thing that grieving people do, however, is we look for comfort. It might be in food, or, or shopping, or, or binge-watching Netflix. Or in the case of those who've been through the colony or Barbara's place, it may be returning to an addiction. Getting drunk or high, or, or heading back to the casino, or downloading an app for your phone that could help you clue into some football pool, or, or dealing with issues that you may never have even thought about when you were in the colony. It's even watching porn. See, it might give us some sense of control over the uncontrollable, 
but the reality is it doesn't. What it does instead, it, it distracts us from the necessary act of grieving. We need to return to the source of all of our comfort, and that's God. But let's get honest. When we're going through grief and we're in the heat of it all, we just don't feel like God is there. We don't feel his presence. In fact, we don't feel anything. We have this, this empty sense in our hearts of missing our loved one. And we know that it will never be the same. We hurt. We feel deep loss. And you know what? We hate those feelings. Most of all, we, we hate the situation that we've been placed in. We might acknowledge God verbally and, and use a lot of Christianized words, you know, oh, well, God is good and, and, you know, God's got this and, and God is in control. But behind all of that, we have a lot of questions. A lot of questions. And those questions really have no answers. And you know what? Everybody around us, they seem to be okay, but we're not okay. And I get it. I really do. Consider this. If you're in grief right now and you're going through it and you've lost somebody you love, this is where you're at. You might hate it, but it's where you're at right now. So, keep hurting. That's a good thing, believe it or not. You're feeling strong emotions, and, and that's so necessary as you travel this journey. Keep trusting. I know you might not acknowledge that God really cares or even understands what you're going through. I understand that, but, but keep trusting. Keep trusting Him through this journey. And the third thing is don't quit. Don't quit on this journey. Don't, don't stop going on this journey. Don't stop trying to move on because you're not. You're moving forward. There's a big difference. You see, if you're moving on, it means you can't remember your loved one. You can't, that, that loved one is not part of your life. That loved one hasn't changed you in some way, and he or she has. Moving forward means that part of your loved one is still with you and doesn't change. Even if your life changes, your loved one will still be there. That's moving forward. Don't look for distractions to control your feelings. Don't look to replace that person with some other person or some other dependency. Keep moving on your journey. Seek help and guidance wherever you can work out these emotions and feelings, and that's where we can help you. America's Kevin offers Grief Share. It's an opportunity to gather in community with others who are going through loss and, and learning from others. Watch this video about Grief Share. Grief Share is a support group ministry that helps people heal from the pain of grief. The Grief Share video seminars, workbook exercises, and small group discussions give participants encouragement, useful advice, and hope. The Grief Share videos are, are excellent. The video strengthened me. It's a freeing kind of thing to be able to talk about your loss. My workbook helped me to unravel the feelings I was going through. If you know people in your church or community who are grieving the death of a loved one. Tell them about Grief Share or visit a Grief Share group yourself to heal from the pain of your grief. There was such a void until I got into Grief Share. I never really healed down deep until I came to Grief Share. Grief Share brought me out of my sadness. Begin your journey from mourning to joy at Grief Share. Keswick offers Grief Share to the community through our Enriched program. It's on Tuesday mornings at 10 o'clock here in the Rawls Auditorium in the Millsaps Room. 
And starting on December 2nd, we'll be offering Grief Share to our current and former colony guys on Thursdays at 7 p.m. in the Colony Chapel. If you have any questions, you can contact us at 732-350-1187. And remember this, God really cares. He really does. We cry out to him in our time of need. It doesn't matter when we actually experienced our loss. It could be weeks, it could be months, it could be years. It could have been just a couple days ago, or it could have been 20 years ago. And it could have even happened when you were in the heat of your addiction, or it could have been the cause of your addiction. Grief never ends. It changes, and God still cares. Psalm 61, starting in verse 1. Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Thank you for watching, and remember, we're here for you.